Welcome back to NPTEL course on game theory. In the previous session we have seen fictitious play. In this session we will see another method to solve zero sum games. So, this method we use differential equations. So, this method is called Brown Neumann Nash dynamics. BNN dynamics. So, in this we start with a zero sum game. So, A is the matrix corresponding to the zero sum game, then we assume that A is symmetric. this is a symmetric game. What it means is that A is a skew symmetric matrix. It is going to be a skew symmetric matrix. Therefore, uh, such games are called symmetric games which we have seen it in the earlier session. So, is this assumption a restriction? Here is a question an interesting exercise let a be any matrix game consider another matrix game given by 0 minus A transpose A 0. So, 0 are the 0 matrix appropriate order depending on the sizes of A and minus A transpose of course, that means A. Look at this one let me call this as a B then B is a symmetric game B corresponds to symmetric game. So, the exercise is to see that the saddle point equilibria of A and saddle point equilibria of B are related. At this moment I will not uh, explicitly say what they are which you should try to calculate from looking at the structure. Okay. So, this is going to be an interesting exercise. So, therefore, computing the saddle points of this B is sufficient to compute the uh, to find the saddle point equilibrium of A. So, therefore, assuming that A is symmetric is not a restriction. Now, what is the so we assume symmetric game that means the matrix A satisfies now minus A transpose. Now, what is the advantage of this one? The important advantage is that value corresponding to A is 0. Okay. So, the value is going to be 0 that means the optimal value is there. Now, what is going to happen with this is that suppose a player if he does not get a 0 value somehow he will try to choose something which makes forces the value to be 0. So, this is the idea behind uh, this BNN dynamics. So, in a sense let us say a player 2 chooses y let us say at time 0. Okay. If player 1's value corresponding to y is not 0, then y will be perturbed. So, some force which brings this y changes to y so that the value of the player 1 is going to be 0. So, 
this is basically the idea in some sense at any point of time if some strategy is chosen you try to enforce that the value is going to move towards 0. So, this is the idea and let us explicitly mention it what exactly is going to happen. So, there are uh, m pure strategies and of course, there are 2 players. Now, what is really important is that at any point of time when a player chooses a pure strategy and you want to look at the weight that the player is giving to that particular thing. So, this is basically the idea here. So, let us say you take any E i is a pure strategy and y is any other strategy for player 2, this is the strategy where. So, E i is the pure strategy. Of course, I can be anything between 1 to m. Now, the u i y, u i y that means this is nothing but e i transpose a y. So, this is the value that player 1 is getting when he uses the pure strategy e i. So, this is the value player 1 gets. Okay. So, when is y min max strategy? y is min max strategy if u i y is less than or equal to 0 for all i. So, recall what is min max strategy? Min max strategy is the one which minimizes the player this thing. You recall uh, what is the mean you recall this minimum y in delta 2 max x in delta 1 x transpose a y. So, anything which minimizes this that is going to be the min max strategy of the player 2. So, y is the min max strategy. We know that by because it is a symmetric game this is always greater than or equals to 0. So, in fact, this has to be because the value is 0, this has to be equal to 0, that means minimum of this is 0. Therefore, that will happen only if u i y is less than or equal to 0 for every i. If u i y is less than or equal to 0, then y is going to become y becomes a min max strategy because the minimum over of this is less than equal to 0, but this is always greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, both become equal to 0 and hence this happens. Okay. So, this is necessary. To, now, let us define some terms. We define phi i y to be maximum of 0 comma u i y and define phi y to be phi 1 y plus phi 2 y plus so and so phi m y. I am taking this sums. Now, phi i y is giving return of player 1 if u i y is greater than or equal to 0. Whenever u i y is bigger than 0, because u i y is the pay of that player 1 is receiving, receiving therefore, the phi i y will give you the value that player 1 is getting whenever this happens. Now, the BNN dynamics are given by the following thing. So, this is given by d y i t by d t is phi i y t minus phi y t into y i t where t greater than 0 of course, i is equals to 1 to m and y 0 initially starts with any strategy. Of course, delta m here is the set of all pure uh, set of all mixed strategies for the players. So, I have 
I have been writing delta 1 and delta 2 here both are same. So, here delta 1 is equals to delta 2 all of them are same. Okay. So, this is basically the dynamics that we have it. So, what is realizing y i t is essentially telling you the strategy that the player is going to use when the player 1 uses the pure strategy i. So, that is is it is giving. So, now in this dynamics phi we do not know a priori whether y t remains in delta or not. So, therefore, I need to extend these things outside this thing. So, we extend phi's to whole domain by phi of y is nothing but phi of y by mod y. If y is not in delta and of course, if y is equals to 0, we just simply take phi 0 to be 0. So, this is basically a, of course, I am using the same the values here, same phi, but without loss of generality and with an abuse of notation, we are doing this, but we should be careful in looking at it. So, outside this delta, if you have another point y, another uh, vector y, then phi y I will define simply to be phi y by mod y. And of course, when y is equal to 0, this phi 0 is simply defined as 0. Now, this is basically the dynamics. So, so let us let me write down once again the BNN dynamics is nothing but d phi i d y i t by d t is nothing but phi i y t minus phi y t into y i t t greater than 0 and y at 0 is, is in delta. Now, the most important thing that would like to point out here is that this phi i phi they are all continuous functions. So, nice functions not only that the definition if we look at it here phi i y is nothing but the maximum of 0 and u i y and u i y is the payoff that player 1 is receiving it that is this that means it is linear in y that immediately implies u i y is linear in y and maximum of 2 linear functions therefore phi i y is going to be a Lipschitz continuous functions phi i y is a Lipschitz continuous function and of course, automatically phi which is sum of phi i's is also Lipschitz continuous function. Therefore, being a Lipschitz continuous functions, we can immediately say that by applying this cauchy picards theorem, this differential equation, the system of differential equations is uh, i is equals to 1 to m here, this system of differential equation has a solution and in fact, it is unique. Okay. So, by Cauchy Picard theorem, BNN has unique solution. Now, the most important thing that this does not, this does not guarantee that yt is in delta. So, we still require because the solution should remain inside delta because delta is our mixed strategy space and y t is y t is basically y 1 y 2 y m y m that should be a mixed strategy that means this the must sum to 1 that 
it does not guarantee that requires a proof. So, we will now try to prove this one. So, for this we consider an auxiliary body which is given by d x i t by d t which is phi i x t and x at 0 is nothing but y at 0 which are in delta. So, I am simply considering d x i t by d t is same as phi i x t. You look at this simple what we did is this particular term we have avoided there. Okay. So, without loss of generality we can assume phi i x at 0 is greater than 0. Okay. So, why are we assuming it? If x at 0 is 0, if phi i x at 0 is 0 that means the u i x at 0 is less than equal to 0 therefore that is automatically becoming a min max strategy. So, we do not need to worry about solving any further. So, we restrict to this case. If this case is not true then it is obviously x 0 is going to be the strategy. So, therefore, we with this is a without loss of generality we can assume this. Now, once again phi is Lipschitz continuous. So, this auxiliary equation has unique solution okay. and of course, we are going to have everything in R m minus singleton 0 here because phi i is greater than 0 all the time whatever it is because by the definition of phi i this is always greater than or equal to 0. So, this term is always greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, x i t as t changes the derivative is non-negative therefore, x i t is uh, this is always increasing. Therefore, x i t is non-decreasing. So, this is a important fact. Therefore, x i t is always greater than equals to x i 0. Now, if I assume x i 0 is greater than 0 because that is our without loss of generality x i 0 is strictly greater than 0 implies x i t is also greater than 0. That is a important thing and all of them are Lipschitz continuous. Now, consider d alpha t by d t is summation i is equals to 1 to m x i alpha t because t greater than 0 and alpha 0 is 0. Now, we are considering another ODE which is given by d alpha t by d t is nothing but summation x i alpha t. Now, x i t is are always greater than 0 that is uh, this thing therefore, x i x i is a Lipschitz continuous function. Why x i's are Lipschitz continuous function? They come from this fact x i's are the solutions of this and the derivative of this is given by phi i and what is phi i? Phi i is defined by this and we know that the payoffs phi i's are all bounded this is a bounded thing. So, therefore, phi i is a bounded and that requires another uh, this thing. We have extended this phi i outside the uh, okay, I have not written here in the previous slide, but we extended phi i y is nothing but phi i y by mod y. We have extended this outside the simplex. So, therefore, phi i is always bounded irrespective of what y it is because of that this is bounded term. Therefore, dxi by t dxit by dt is bounded therefore, xi is Lipschitz. So, xi's are Lipschitz continuous. Therefore, there exists again unique solution alpha. So, cauchy picard theorem we have applied again third time here. Now, 
this is also greater than 0. So, that all of that we have. So, now let us look at it d alpha t by dt is this is nothing but summation x i alpha t where i is equals to 1 to m and x i we already proved that they are monotonic therefore they are greater than equals to sigma x i at alpha 0 that is 0. this is nothing but 1, this implies alpha t is greater than equals to t this for every t. So, now we define y i t to be x i alpha t by summation j is equals to 1 to m x j alpha t. Now, I have normalized these x i's with this thing. Therefore, this y t now becomes delta. Okay. So, this happens for each t greater than equals to 0. Now, climb is y t is basically is solution of B and N dynamics. So, this is not really a hard thing to prove it. What we have is the following thing what is y i t into summation j is equals to 1 to m x j alpha t this is nothing but x i alpha t by the definition of y. So, from here. So, this is there. So, now if I differentiate both sides with respect to t, then what we are going to get is y i prime t summation x j alpha t plus y i t summation x j prime alpha t into alpha prime t this is into this is same as x i prime alpha t into alpha prime t. Okay. Now, this is uh, this thing and we use all this what is x j prime t alpha prime t on all these things if you put it then little bit of arithmetic here algebra little bit of algebra that gives you that y i prime t plus y i t into summation phi j y t is nothing but phi i y t. So, I have excluded the algebra here and once you do this algebra here just simplify because we need to use what is x j prime alpha t alpha prime t everything using the previous equations we start putting it then we will get this one this implies y is solution of b n n dynamics that is this thing. Okay. So, that is the first step. Next we will take uh, without with an abuse of notation we simply use phi i t in the place of phi i y t instead of repeating phi i y t we simply use phi i t. Now, let us define psi t to be summation phi i t square. Okay. So, psi t is nothing but this phi i t squares of course, we have suppressed this y t here. So, that is a understandable thing here. Now, then what we can do here is that suppose phi i t is greater than 0. In fact, if you recall this we have made as a without loss of generality assumption then d phi i t by d t this is going to be e i a 
d y t by d t. So, this why is this coming? It is coming from here, from here because I have assumed phi i y is greater than 0 that means phi i y is nothing but u i y therefore the derivative of phi i y is nothing but the derivative of u i y and the derivative of u i y is exactly what is written here. Okay, so, that comes from there. Now, this is same as a i j phi j t minus phi t summation a i j y j t. So, just substitute whatever y is there and write down all the things and this is exactly what we will get it. So, once we get this what we have is that following thing the 2 phi i t into d phi i t by d t. What is this? This is nothing but d phi i t square by d t. We are calculating this one. Okay. If I calculate this one, this is going to be the following thing. I will I'll just write it 2 summation j of course here a i j phi i t phi j t this is summation over j only here minus 2 phi t summation over j a i j phi i t y j t this is what this thing is. Okay. Now, in this inequality even if phi i is 0 if this if phi i t happens to be 0, then this side it is 0 and you can easily verify that phi i t is here, phi i t is here. So, therefore, this also becomes 0. So, therefore, this inequality is true even if phi i t is 0. This equality is true even if phi i t is 0 that is very important. Now, we sum over all i, then that gives you summation d phi i t square by d t, this is going to be summation 2, sum 2 into summation i comma j a i j phi i t phi j t minus 2 phi t summation a i j phi i t y j t of course summation i comma j. Now, we know that it is a symmetric game a is equals to minus a transpose if because a is minus a transpose a i j is nothing but minus a j i we use that one then what we will get here is that this term the summation the second term here is going to be same as summation phi i t the second term is equal to summation phi i t into summation a i j y j t this is going to be psi t. So, psi t we have already defined here. Okay. So, this is going to be the psi t. So, if that essentially means that we the following thing we proved, we proved following lemma. The lemma is psi t satisfies d psi t by d t this is nothing but minus 2 phi t psi t. Okay. So, here before going I have only said about this second term what happens to the first term? The first term becomes 0 because of this condition only the second term remains that is 
that comes to be minus 2 phi t psi t. So, so d psi t is equals to minus 2 phi t psi t. Now using uh, the ideas from the differential equations what we can now prove here is that from ideas in differential equations we can actually prove that root psi t is less than or equals to phi t which is less than or equals to root m into psi t. So, this is it exactly comes from the this one you can use the integration by parts or whatever way it is you will get this value and take this complete this details here the details. Okay. So, once this happens now what we have here is that phi is, non, uh, is a non negative things therefore, this is a negative thing psi t is a non psi t is a decreasing function. So, psi t is a is decreasing that is first thing and another thing is that phi t is greater than 0 as long as psi t is bigger than 0 that comes eventually x from here itself. If psi t is greater than 0, phi t has to be greater than 0. So, if this is greater than 0, this also is greater than 0 and from this equation this is a negative term. So, therefore, psi t is a non-increasing. So, that comes. Okay. Now, using these bounds what we can of course, why this is coming? this also comes from the definition of psi. So, you can use this from here also you can see it that this particular inequality is coming and use this inequality and to say that the following happens d psi t by d t is going to be less than or equals to minus 2 psi t power 3 by 2 and we can also say that this is what is coming this immediately actually using uh, the Gronwald's lemma kind of stuff we can say that this psi t is going to be less than or equals to psi at 0 by 1 plus root of mod y 0 into t this square this comes this comes from Gronwald's lemma using the Gronwald's lemma you will get of course, this inequality is coming from this inequ this inequality use this inequality here and if you put that we will get to this and eventually you will get this one. Okay. So, what we have if psi t happens to be 0 then even this particular thing this is also true this is true even if psi t equals to 0 it does not matter now. Okay. So, therefore, this inequality is true always in fact we can prove psi t is nothing but psi 0 into e power of minus 2 integral 0 to t phi s ds this is there. From here also we can see that psi t is going to 0 as t goes to infinity. Okay. So, this is coming basically from because there is a t here as t goes to infinity this term is going to 0 therefore, psi t goes to 0 as t goes to infinity. So, what is psi t? Psi t is this. So, summation phi i t square summation phi i t square is going to 0 as t goes to infinity that means each phi i t is going to 0 phi i t is nothing but phi i y t is 
y t. Therefore, what we have here is that phi i y t is going to 0 as t going to infinity. That means what is phi i by going back to the definition of phi i is this phi i y t is going to 0 that means u i y t is going to 0 that means y is going to be the min max strategy. That means y t converges to a min max strategy as t goes to infinity. So, this proves the following theorem thus what we have is the following theorem B n and dynamics are asymptotically stable and any limit of the trajectory is a saddle point equilibrium. Okay. So, this is the theorem that finally we have proved. So, the uh, if you really look at it the idea that what, what we have done is first we showed that the BNN dynamics has a strategy unique uh, trajectory then to show that the trajectory is converges something we use the Lee of function idea. So, we have used that the psi works as a Lee of function and that proves this one. So, this is a slightly technical uh, result, but the proofs are not really hard, but it is a very interesting method to show the uh, to compute the saddle point equilibrium of asymmetric zero sum games. In fact, any zero sum game can be symmetrized and hence this works with any general zero sum games. Okay, with this we will conclude this session, we will meet again in the next session.